Hi guys, it's Sherry. So today you are going to make this exact piece with me. I'm going to show you step by step how to create this piece. You can see that this is a separate lid. I'm going to show you how to do that along with covering your jar. And you can see how beautiful this piece came out. I am so happy with this one. I hope that you enjoy doing this video with me. So let's get started. Okay guys, so to start out with this project, I rolled out my Primo clay to my halfway setting. So on my pasta machine, this is a number four. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have my stamp or textured stamp and I'm going to place it on here and I'm just going to start imprinting this. Um, if you don't have that, you can use a tool. And I'm going to show you how I'll deepen some of these, you know, imprints with that. So I'm just going to place it on here and I'm just going to press pretty hard. And I want to get a nice imprint. So it's not very deep, unfortunately. But I have my clay pretty thin, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. I'm going to just cut this straight. So I have a straight line. Same thing with this one. Okay, so you can see some of the texture there. So that'll be a little guideline for me to use for my lines and now I'm just going to get my jar and I don't have to put nothing on my jar because I am wrapping the entire thing get an idea where I need to cut this I'm just kind of pressing that there. I'm just going to get my knife and I'm going to cut that section off. Okay. And I'm just going to press up. I want to stop at the very edge of it because I have to put the lid on. And the lid is also going to have clay on it. So I need to make sure that I have enough space so I can actually turn the lid. So all I'm going to do is kind of take my finger and roll this up and then I could clean it up afterwards. Okay, and then I'm going to take my jar here and I want to roll my clay out again so I could get the back on there or the bottom. So by pressing it, it gives me my imprint that I need to know where to cut. And my circle is not going to be perfect and that's okay because I can spread it. 
I'm going to take this and just kind of cut off that extra there. And now you just press this down and blend these two pieces of clay together. Try not to destroy too much of your stamp here, so don't press on the sides too hard. Now I'm just going to kind of follow a little bit of my stamp here. Now some of it came off. This is not a very good stamp. If you want, you can take it and just roll it and press a little bit more on this. And that'll help give you a little bit more guide. Okay. And now I'm going to take this tool and I'm just going to kind of press in a bit and follow some of these lines. Just to give it a little more indent here. If you don't have a stamp, you could just make lines and that works just as fine. You can see that <clears throat> I'm going back and forth from using the back of this to the side of it and that gives me a nice contrast of thick and thin so i kind of like going both ways this way it gives it a little bit more dimension and one of the reasons i really like using the stamp is because i have all these beautiful lines for the wood grain but in the back, I also have a little bit more detailed detail. So like if I want it more, I could just take it now that I have the imprint and kind of roll it again to give it a little bit more of the wood grain in between. I just want to clean this up just a tad bit more. Okay, I'm going to put the jar off to the side for right now. I'm going to get my clay here. All I'm doing is getting it nice and soft again. Okay, I'm going to get ready to make a noodle. Okay, so I'm going to grab my container. I'm going to decide where exactly I want my stone to go. So I just want to figure out where I think it would be. Okay, I like the grains right around here. So I'm going to put my stone right there. I'm just going to kind of press it there. And I am going to just put a tad bit of my clay adhesive on the back of the stone. That'll help secure it. And put it back where I had it. Set that off to the side for a moment. Finish making your noodle. So this particular one, I actually want to almost make like a braid because I want it to look like twisted vines. So I'm going to actually take 
two of my noodles and I'm just going to twist them. That's all you need to do. Just twist it. And you can make it tighter, looser, however you prefer it to look. I'm just going to take it go and cut it through the side there And we're just going to blend that together. All I'm doing is kind of pushing it close to the stone. Because the stone actually has like a little bit of a uh, the back is kind of empty so I'm just pushing this clay underneath it to make sure that I fill that little hole there we go okay put that up right and now I want my main I want my um I want my mushroom to be a good focal point. So I want to make sure it's a nice size, but not too large. So I'm just going to grab it. I'm kind of estimating just by, you know, looking at it. So I'm just going to kind of hold it up here and see how I want it to be exactly. And that's obviously going to be too long. So I know I want that to come down. So I'm thinking there would look nice. Okay, so that's one of them. And then let's get our other one ready. So when you're making mushrooms, you always want to make sure you have one end that is fatter. So it's going to kind of go down on the point like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to make the cap for the mushroom. And all I'm doing is just making a nice little circle here. There we go. Let's see how that will look. I'm just going to kind of blend this in together nicely. Now I'm just pressing this down a bit. 
And we're going to blend this right in to our piece. Here I can see I have a bubble. I can actually feel it. So I'm going to just slice that and get that air out of there. I want the air. I don't want no air inside of here. Okay. Let's do our next one. And I'm just going to thin this out a bit. I want this to lay as smoothly as possible. So I'm just going to cut off some of that clay. Okay. Now I want to do my mushroom top right away. So I'm just going to put my little lines in here. And we can actually lift that up again if we need to. All I'm doing is making straight lines going all the way to the tip. And then we can put that back in place how we want it. I like to always do the very edge too. So I'm just going to Tap my little edges. And then I'll give it a little bit of texture there. Don't worry about if you rip it because mushrooms are not perfect. So that's actually going to give it a little bit of character. And I like that. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. I want to get a my tiny dot tool and I'm just going to kind of give my little mushroom stalks, you know, a little bit of texture here as well. That also should help push it down. Okay. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Alrighty. The tops, I'm just going to kind of rub over them, make them a little rough looking. There we go. I actually decided I am going to take this off. Because I feel like a branch over that little vine look would be better. So let me get, I'm going to make a little bit thicker and longer noodle. And we're just going to kind of lay that around there. Kind of push that off. And I'm going to actually take this tool and I'm going to kind of shape it 
inward, push that in, hold your stone into place because it's not going to be 100% secure right now. And I'm just pushing this underneath my stone to give it that little bit of extra support. Okay, now I'm going to take this and just wrap that right around there and it does not have to be perfect. I kind of want it up a little bit on the stone, down here, maybe a little bit more up on the stone there. Let's rip that off. You see I am not being very clean with this and I'm okay with that because I want to give this a wood look. So I'm going to take one of my tools and I'm just going to kind of create some wood grains and make it look a little rough. Yeah, I kind of like that a little bit better because it looks like a little bit more natural with the wood. Okay, I'm going to put some moss down here. I'm thinking about maybe doing a couple different types of mushrooms. So I know one type of mushroom. We just basically... So do my little ball. this a little bit flat there we go And we're actually going to do it that way. All right, you can see I'm just taking this and I'm making a very flat sheet. It's very thin. I'm just going to carefully lift this. And I kind of want to just take this, just crumple it up just a tad bit if I can. There we go. We're just going to lay that right over here. Oops, my fingers. And make that a little bit flat on the top. Oops. There we go.
and just take a real real thin sheet at this point and just kind of setting them on the mushroom so the mushroom has like a little bit of texture to it and it kind of looks a little bit rough okay and now I just want to take real tiny little balls and I mean tiny and take real real small ones and just set them right on here One right at the very top. Okay, so now carefully lift that up. And I'm going to set that on there. Press it carefully on. And we'll do one tiny one right there. So same thing. We're just going to mark the bottom of this mushroom here. that's going to be the underneath of this mushroom so we want to mark that up and we're just going to do a tiny bit on this one okay let's get our little bit of moss going oops so to do our moss we are just going to take a little bit of clay don't need much Oops. and we're just going to lay it in different areas because most of this we could use the clay that's already there so we're just laying a little bit here and a little bit there and then we're going to take our little dotting tool and you see all this up here well that I want my tiny, tiny one. Let me see. Right here. I'm taking the smallest one I have. And I am just going to just dot and dot and dot right over here. Because this is going to become my moss. Okay, now over that small part i'm going to take a bigger one which we'll go with this one and just give it a little bit here and there to kind of give it different sizes to that moss okay now i'm going to move back over to underneath my little mushrooms because i want to make sure i have some moss under there and i'm going to add a little bit right here on the side of it Get my bigger one and help give it a little bit of a di different texture here. And that looks pretty good. I'm just kind of Going over this area a little bit more. All right, so now on this side, I'm going to do those tree mushrooms that I always like. So with those ones, we're just kind of making a little flat disc. 
I want to kind of get different sizes. All right, so let me see here. Put one here. And then what I'm going to do, um, where is it? Right here. I actually want to take this tool and just kind of push this down a little bit. And that's going to give Give it the look that you see, oops, like the bottom of the mushroom, but it's also going to help kind of cement it to the other clay at the same time. So you're always going to want to start at the top. This way you have areas to work and bring your stuff down without destroying next one that you're going to put up while you're doing this make sure you're not going to destroy this stuff too you want to make sure your hands are free of that area so now let's just i'm just going to flatten that out a bit there and then i'm going to put this in the next spot i want to kind of go up with it and then i'm just going to once again bring the clay down so can you see that so this time we're going to go with a little bit different kind and i'm going to make a ball and i'm going to Go around my ball and kind of make a pointy hat, I guess you could say. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to cut it right in half. Right down. And then set that there and see now it looks like I have a full one there but I actually have half of one there and I could take and I'm just going to take my small ball tool and I'm going to take the inside and press down to make sure that that clay is cement it in there kind of make sure I'm sticking it on there so it does not come off okay, I'm just slowly and carefully pulling these little sides in we're gonna do the same thing with this one oops that to be closer oops don't ruin that mushroom get that there I'm just carefully pulling these down and smoothing that out so pull down and then smooth it out. Okay, now I just got to make my little stems. I'm just going to go inside here and push down. Make sure that that is secure underneath. There we go. Do the same thing with the other one. And then I'm just going to kind of make a few little marks here, help push it down.
Now we take our other tool. We're just going to kind of make that into moss. Put this here for moss as well. And that's coming along beautiful, guys. I'm very happy with this. I think to give a little bit more detail, we're going to do a couple ladybugs. So to do a ladybug, you're going to do a little dot. A smaller one. Let me get that a little bit smaller. We want it to have like a little head. And then I'm just going to go right down the middle. And there is my little ladybug. I hope you can see that clearly. Let's put this little guy, how about right at the top here. And then, oops, we could just take this. And just make a couple little dots. That's all you have to do. And there's your little ladybug. And we're going to do a couple more. And maybe one right there. Okay. And I know I want to put a little butterfly on here. So I have all these butterfly canes. So I want to see, I think this is my butterfly area. Mm, I think this is more my leaves. Oh, I have these tiny. Let's do this real tiny one. Since it's so small, that'll be perfect. Put that there. You could put a couple butterflies on here. This is tiny. Okay. So I don't want all the translucent clay showing. So what I am going to do is actually cut away most of it. And I am going to actually set this. Let's put I'm almost hesitant on putting it over on any of these until I paint it because I have the feeling that I'm gonna end up painting over my little butterfly. So maybe I could put it somewhere that I know. I will not have a lot of paint going. So how about we put it right there? Oops. I'm just kind of pushing this down a little bit. Okay, guys, so now I have my little butterflies in place. I'm just going to kind of clean up this area a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of moss here as well. So I'm just going to take a little extra clay, stick it in that little area. Oops. Add a little moss here. There we go. I 
am very happy with this, guys. I think this came out beautiful, and I really look forward to painting it and really bringing it to life. And I'm thinking of putting one more thing here, but I gotta decide. Do I want to do one mushroom or do I just want to do one butterfly there? And I'm thinking maybe a nice size mushroom. Let me put that down. And now I'm just going to kind of pinch my edges. And we're going to add a few little extra marks. And push down on that. And kind of. might do a couple of those because I really like the way that looks. So let me get my stem going. And maybe one more right there. Okay, I want that there. You here press that down kind of make that a little bit there we go I like that make sure that's still good nothing's ruined oh, we're gonna have to let's see I gotta remember not to do that we gotta redo these little sections when you're laying it down, we got to remember we have stuff on the other side because now I have to redo all my little mossy areas over here. And I accidentally, let's see, I kind of pushed that down. We're going to push that back up. Same thing with this one. Push that back up. So we want that moss, or not moss, we want that mushroom to have all that little freeness there because I accidentally mushed it. So we're going to try to straighten that out. There we go. 
So as you're doing this, put your fingers in here so you don't mush everything like I just accidentally did. Luckily, everything that I did is easily fixable. And that looks good there. So that's all good. Very, very carefully, I mean really carefully, look over everything because once you bake this, it's stuck. You cannot fix it. But if it's not baked yet, you could go over and fix anything that you don't like. Okay. So now, I want to take this. I want to flatten this a bit. And I'm going to put this around here to give it some moss. This is going to be my moss. So carefully hold top and bottom and then start putting your holes in your moss. You can flatten that a bit more. There we go. And I'm actually going to use a bigger one to start out because it'll make it a little bit easier. So here's a bigger ball. Kind of just use a bigger one start if you have such a large area like this. And it'll help blend all that bottom in. And then bring the moss area up onto your mushrooms. Okay, now use your smaller one. Okay, now I'm just going to do a few little marks on my mushrooms. Let's kind of bring that up so it looks like it all connects. And I think we are done, guys. And I am so, so happy with this piece. I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. So once again, like I said, let's go over. Make sure you're happy with whatever lines. Oops. Make sure you're happy with your lines. Because we did play a lot with this piece today. So... Make sure your lines are as deep as you wanted them to be. Or as close as you wanted them to be. And then carefully smooth your piece out a bit. Make sure your mushroom caps are really good. Check your little mushroom pieces here. Make sure everything's still sticking out. that open a bit all right so I am very pleased with this I think it's gonna be absolutely gorgeous by the time it's finished being painted um, I am going to stick this in my toaster oven for a full hour at 275 because it is primo clay and once it's cooled off, then oops, we will come back and we will paint everything. So I will be back. Okay, guys, so now it's time to work on our lid. So what I'm going to do is I just rolled out my Primo clay. Once again, I have it on number four on my pasta machine. And I'm just going to pull my clay up kind of get an idea I just kind of want to make little marks on my clay so I know exactly where I need to cut it okay
and I'm just going to follow the line to where my marks were. And now I'm going to take my oven baked clay adhesive and you do not need a lot. And I'm just going to roll right over this. I really want to get my sides so my clay um, sticks well. Okay, and I'm going to just set that right back in the same spot. And then just slowly pull your clay up. And now I'm just going to get my knife and start trimming. Ooh, got stuck there. And I'm just slowly kind of making my edges a little bit more smoother here because all this we can sand down after it's baked. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little stamp out again and I want to just take my piece and roll it right over. And see I'm getting like little marks here which is exactly what I want when you're smoothing the edges try not to touch too much of the side just get the edge so you're not going to ruin the marks that you just made Alrighty, perfect. So now I just want to put a tiny little mushroom on the top. So I'm just going to make my stem. I don't want anything big. And I'm just making a ball right now. This one I kind of want to do a little bit different. I'm going to make this one a little bit more pointy. I'm just going to mark the insides and make little lines. Pushing down on that. I'm just going to press down on that just to kind of secure it. Just smoothing out my little stem here. I think I'm going to do two tiny ones here, right on the side. So I'm going to actually put it over this. don't have a ball tool. Let's see. I don't think I have a ball tool that that will work. Maybe this one. Let's see how this one will work. It's a little small. A little big. Maybe that'll work. And you want to make that pointy again. I'm 
kind of want to turn it a bit if I can. I'm just going to put this inside and press down. Press that down. Okay. And then we're just going to put a tiny bit of moss over there to make it match with the container. So just put some clay at the bottom and now we are just going to make some dots everywhere. I'm going to just slowly add a little bit up here and I'm going to add a few little dots to my mushroom caps. Down on that. There we go. What I'm doing is I'm taking my tool and I'm going inside and making sure that I'm pushing everything down and making sure that it's 100% secure onto the lid. So I am really happy with that. So I'm going to put this in my toaster oven for a half hour and then we will start painting. So now it's time to paint. You can see that my piece is completely out of the oven and I am very pleased with the results. I did sand down the top a bit to make sure that it was nice and smooth for my lid. And what we're going to do first is we are going to paint all the wood grain. So I'm going to start out with a lighter color first. So I picked out fur brown. And then we are just going to start painting. Don't worry if you get the other stuff because um, we could paint right over that. I'm just going to go over certain areas again. So I get the color that I really desire because I am going to go over this with a darker brown, but I'm going to wipe that darker brown off. I basically want my dark brown to just go into the wood grain. All right. Now let me just paint the bottom here. Now I'm going to use oak brown for my dark. So what I'm gonna do with this is I got my brush wet and I'm just gonna get my dark brown and make sure it's nice and wet. I'm gonna come right over here and then I am just gonna go right over And you take your paper towel and you just wipe. So now you got the dark inside the lines and you have the light outside. And you can see some of the regular paint because I didn't let it dry like overnight or whatever is going to kind of come off which I am perfectly fine with that because I think it gives it more um, character so I'm okay with that if you're not okay with that then you let your piece dry overnight or at least a couple hours before you do this okay okay so now these little areas here just get a tool and kind of rub it in there
In certain areas, you could go back over with your light afterwards, because like here, I kind of took a little bit too much white off. So I'll go back over that then. I just want to kind of lighten some of this area up, so I'm just going to rub some of this paint off. I got my tiny, tiny brush here, and I am just going to take my light brown and I'm just going to go over certain areas that I just want to add some more color to that I took off. Okay. Just get that. As you can see, I'm just kind of rubbing this paint on, but then I'm using my finger to kind of rub it off, so to speak. But that's just, I'm just kind of trying to blend it to get some of the paint to blend nicely. There we go. I am really happy with the way that looks. All right, so before I do anything else, I am going to let this completely dry. So I'm going to give this probably about a half hour to 100% dry before I go touching it and painting more things on it. So, um, and by that time, our lid should be finished and then we can work on that as well. We're going to work on the lid right now. <clears throat> while we're waiting for the um, base to dry completely. So we're going to do the same exact thing as we did to the other one. So we're going to start out with the light color brown first. Okay, I'm going to let that Try. I'm going to do one real quick coat again on the top. All right, so now we're going to do our dark. Okay. I'm going to put that off to the side. I think this is pretty well dried. So the first thing that we're going to start on is our moss because that will be one of the easiest parts to do. And I'm actually getting two different greens because I want to blend them together. And this is why I'm doing the moss before I get into all these details. Because you can see, as small as this brush is, I'm still hitting those little mushrooms there. So anything that you know is going to cause you to get paint on something else, you want to do that first. This is like a, a little bit gray green I guess you could say and I just want to add a little here and a little there I'm not going to add too much of it just in little areas kind of give it a little bit of that two-tone I just want to take a little bit of brown kind of clean up my edges here where I got the moss okay get that off my hands a little bit We'll get the moss on the lid right away. All right, so I got this really nice red. 
and I actually want to do the tops of these. So now I'm going to get a small brush because I want to make sure that I'm real careful with this. And very carefully, I'm just going to do the tops of these mushrooms. I'm trying to get the inside of that area. So I want to make sure I get every little area and I don't miss anything. Alrighty, that looks good. Okay, I got a little bit of orange here. And I'm just going to carefully just add a tiny bit. I'm going to get my one brush. I'm just going to blend them together. So put a little bit on and blend. Okay, dry that off each time I do this. And then I'm going to see if I could add just a tad bit yellow. And I just want to add that right at the very bottom. Okay. All right. I'm happy with that. Let me get my white. And now I'm going to paint the inside very carefully. Okay, so now we're going to get our little brown again, our light brown, and we're just going to take some white and blend that in there. And we are just going to add a little bit of that on there. So I kind of want to give it a little bit two-tone again. Everything looks better when it's two-tone. It brings it to life. And then I just want to get a little bit of this brown get the inside so we could really see all those little lines I'm hoping that'll bring this will bring that out so we are going to just take this and 
I'm going to just a little dot it right where those little dots are. going to blend that a little bit okay now we're just going to touch up that little bit of red or the orange I mean because I unfortunately got some paint on there so I just want to touch this up I'm just going to add and blend Same thing over here. Okay. And then I'm just going to kind of put little dots right where my little holes are. Now I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm just going to carefully outline my bottom here. And there you go, guys. Look how gorgeous that lid is. That is absolutely beautiful. I am super happy with that. Look at that. So beautiful. Okay, so we got one section done. And now we move on to the rest. Okay, so my next step is to do the inside of my um, mushroom caps. And those I am going to do with a little bit of white and a little bit of brown. I'm just going to blend my colors together. And then we're going to do the light brown. So first we're going to do white. Okay, let that dry a bit and do my stem right away. If you get a little bit of white on your brown here, that's okay because we could do a little bit of touch up after we're done with it all. So don't stress out if you do get any on your brown. Just remember to get all your little edges. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go back to the first two that I did. See how wet that still is? It's still a little tacky, so we're going to let that go. We want to fully let that dry. So what I'm going to do is, while that's drying, I'm just going to start painting some of my other smaller sections here. So, like my mushroom over here. I'm not going to make this a perfect, I just kind of want to go over it a little bit so when I put my red on, it shows up a lot easier. These ones I'm doing purple, so I'm not going to worry about going over them with the white. I'm just going to focus on the stems. Okay, so now I'm going to take my white and my brown, and I'm going to kind of just make a lighter brown. And then I am going to go inside here and just on the top, on the edges I mean. Wipe those off. I'm going to rinse 
rinse my brush. And then I'm going to take some of my white here. And I'm just going to kind of pull it out a bit into the middle. Kind of blend my pieces nicely together. And then take a small blender. And just kind of blend it nicely together. I'm actually going to put some darker ones on the edges here because I actually think the dark would look better. So let's get some dark. Add a little bit of white and just keep blending so you get the desired look that you want and I want my middle to be lighter but I don't want it to be actually white so I'm just going to keep blending all right so now let's get a smaller brush and we're going to start making our um, stems different colors like we did on the lid so we just want very very little brown on this add a little bit more white Get a tiny bit of dark. Do this one as well. You can see I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just kind of doing little areas here and there. Kind of like a shade in. And that's just going to give it um, a little bit more detail to kind of pop out. If you get too much dark, you just go over with some white. And you just keep doing it till you find exactly the shade that you like and you think will look good on your piece. And remember to get your sides. You don't want everything to be shaded and then you have this pure white on the side and it kind of looks a little weird. Alright, so let's get started on the mushroom caps. And I know I want to do one that matches this. So I'm thinking maybe these guys because they're thicker. So let's get our red out paint your edges. I want to get a flatter brush so I know that I am going to be able to get to my edges without getting paint on anything else. And carefully get underneath there. There we go. Get that off of there. Now I'm going to get a thinner brush again. I'm going to get a tiny one like that. I'm going to get my orange out. And then I'm going to get my 
blender. Oops. I'm going to keep adding until I get exactly what I want. Let me get some yellow. Okay, that I really like. Now, to do the edges. So we want to carefully add some to the edges here. And then we're going to take our tool and just carefully blend it. And we don't want to go too far into the actual mushroom. Carefully just add the little white and then blend and get a dry one. A little white over that and then just, oops, blend it. Now I'm just using a dry brush for this. There we go. Very happy with that. Okay. So that looks really nice. And then right away, I am actually going to get my brown paint and I'm going to do my little touch-ups real quick because I don't want to forget to do them later. So I'm just going to carefully go around areas that I'm may have gotten different colors on okay those two mushrooms are completely done and look fantastic i'm actually going to add little dots on these little indents that i put just a tad bit and then i'm going to use my finger to kind of soften them All these tiny little details are really going to help bring out your piece. They may not seem important, but I really think when you put all these little tiny details into it, that's what makes your piece unique and special. I'm going to do the same thing right away to these little guys. This time, instead of blending them in, I'm just going to leave them right where they are. Now we're going to get our purple out. I got a tiny bit right there. Let's get a little bit of white on that. To kind of clean that up. And we're actually going to put some white at the bottom of our mushroom and blend that. I want my tiny one. And that looks really nice. Okay, so now we could do the red on here and do our little ladybugs. And then we will work on these mushrooms. Now 
Now you see these like little areas that um, I kind of bunched up at the t for the top of the mushroom. We're actually going to take our light brown and our white and we're just going to color those ones in. And just take a little bit of dark brown and edge it off. Same thing over here. Put some more white on here. And then our dark brown for the edging. And now we just put our little white dots on. I'm putting these on pretty thick because I really want them to kind of pop out. Alright, very happy with that. Now we could get our black to do the um, ladybug's heads. And then we're going to, oh, we'll wait to get a thinner one for that. And do our dots then. I want a smaller paintbrush for the dots. Okay, let me get a thinner brush. And I got this really nice thin brush. And now I could go right in and just put my little black dots on my ladybug. Alright, so now I have a different color brown. I want to be very careful I do not touch any of that. So this brown is going to go on the top of these shrooms here. And then the bottom, I haven't decided exactly what color I'm going to do that yet. But let's get the top started. I might end up doing these with a yellow edging that kind of goes down a little bit. I think that would look nice. I just find this piece to be so fun. And... I just love making things that have to do with the earth and animals, mushrooms, trees. It really um, is right up my alley on giving me that peace and serenity that I enjoy doing with art. I'm going to carefully do the bottoms here. Cover up some of that green. Okay, let that dry just a tad bit. And I'm thinking the yellow really will make it pop a little bit. So I'm definitely going to go with the yellow. And I might add a little bit more yellow to this as well to really kind of bring that out as well. Alright, so now let's add our yellow. Just a little bit, just on the edge. Just to kind of bring it out just a little bit. You can see I'm barely putting any on there, but it's going to be just enough to really make it pop. That's perfect. Okay. Now I just got a little bit of purple. All right. So my piece looks pretty good on that side. So now we'll move over to here. And I can see that there's going to be quite a bit of touch-ups, which I'm fine with. The inside I like. So now it's time for the top. And the tops, I'm actually going to do... A little bit of orange to the very top okay then I'm actually going to do a little red I'm gonna do some blend in here and it gets like a nice pink look to it My final touch is going to be, once again, my yellow. 
And this time I'm going to do all my little edges. That kind of. These ones I want the yellow to be really bright. So I'm going to do the edge in pretty good here. To do the top, I just want to kind of blend that back because I don't want the top to have that line. I want it to be blended in. Let me just do my touch-ups on the brown and then we can finish this up. What I'm doing is I'm kind of making my brush fairly wet. So this way my dark brown isn't going to be overly dark. It just smooths right over it. And covers up that yellow. Sometimes if you get paint, say like on here, and if you just get your paintbrush wet, you could just rub that paint right off and you don't have to do too much touch up. Okay guys, so let this dry 100%. So give it, you know, about 20 minutes to a half hour and then we will finish this up completely. We can start out with our lid. And I just want to put some of my gloss on here. So I have my Sculpey gloss glaze and I am just going to I'm just going to put this right on top and you want to make sure your piece is 100% dry before you do this. And this will make everything shiny and bright and it will really make the colors pop. And I am so excited to see the end results of this. Okay, remember where your fingers are? So you can go right over it again. I'm going to take my tool. And then I'm just going to go right over where my fingers were. All right, we will let this piece dry. And then once our jar is completely dry, we will glaze that as well. Our piece is finally complete. And this is the top. And I absolutely think it came out beautiful. And then here are the sides. You can see I still have a little bit of glaze that's in there that is ready to, or still needs to dry, but that's okay. But look how gorgeous, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed making this piece with me. Bye.